Hello, and welcome to an episode of Drinking the Kool-Aid. This is a comedy podcast dedicated to the mysterious. My name is Cassidy. My name's Amanda. And it's so nice to not be in a costume. <laughs> it really is, actually. <laughs> Even though I, I enjoyed myself, it was a great time. It was I, fun, but it was sweaty it as was hell. Sw- Even though we're in sweatshirts right now. Yeah, but there's something about sweating into like a costume that's so much worse. You're right. And it's always like weird material. material. Yeah. <laughs> like, why is this wool? Like, what's happening? <laughs> wool, silk. You never know. Polyester. polyester. It's all polyester. <laughs> it's all polyester to me, baby. That's right. Yeah. Um, happy November. Now on to my second favorite holiday, Thanksgiving. Yes, it is no November. It's November. We will be doing nothing. We will be saying no to all of you. Just kidding. We'll never I say no. I left my house yesterday for the first time since Halloween. And uh, I I was like, well, I should have just stayed home. Probably. Because it's November. It's November. We don't do things in no. Just say no, people. But I did have a really good steak sandwich for breakfast this morning. Ooh. For breakfast, huh? Yeah, because I grilled steaks yesterday. And then obviously had leftover we got the Costco pack, so there was like a million of them, and then I needed to cook them, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, cooked it perfectly, me- medium rare yesterday, and then just threw it in the oven to warm it up this morning, sliced it up, put it between some sourdough, toasted the sourdough, a little bit of uh, horsey sauce from uh, Arby's on there. Oh. Very good. I am curious, when you say breakfast, like what time was that? 12.30. Okay. So lunch. I don't that's <laughs> breakfast to me. <laughs> I was like, there's when she says breakfast, I know it's not before noon. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I had to do I had to sit down in the shower for like 30 minutes. As first. you do every day <laughs> of your life. <laughs> With a diet coke. <laughs> oh, you did have a diet coke. Oh, I had a diet coke, yeah. Okay. Well, you were saying you were so tired, so I assumed you didn't have any caffeine today. No, I only had one. <laughs> oh, well, you should have had three. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would be here like, hey everybody. <laughs> I it's funny, I was watching the video last week and uh, we were drinking beers and I could see myself like quivering as I was holding it because that was the day I had three you Diet had Cokes. You had three Diet Cokes. Yeah. And, I, and it got me. Yeah. You can't be doing that kind of stuff, girl. You definitely can't be drinking out of a martini glass three Diet Cokes deep when you're as shaky as me. Definitely not. No. <laughs> no. You'd be spilling that shit everywhere. Yeah. Be everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it was so embarrassing. I can't remember if I told you this story before or not. So I, uh, for my birthday this year... Me and my boyfriend went to Joshua Tree Mm -hmm. and we road tripped out there and we have a friend who has a house out there and she happened to be out there at the same time as us. So she was like, hey, come see the house. I'm working on the landscaping. My boyfriend used to work in landscaping. So she was like, give me some input on what you think I should do with all this space. And uh, Cassidy, since it's your birthday, we'll go to the little tavern. Joshua, it was the Joshua Tree Saloon or whatever. Fantastic. have a drink and have some snacks or whatever and before you guys check into your campsite. So we go and do that. And I had driven on the way there because I hate driving home. Mm-hmm. That is like one thing. I will always drive there. I don't. I cannot drive home. I'm not built for it. What? Why? Because you just had too much fun? No, I think it's uh, like it's a patience thing. Mm, you just want to get I home. just want to be home so bad that like I get really, really frustrated and aggravated driving home. When you're driving somewhere, you're just so excited to be at that place. And it's like yeah. fun. And, you know, you're like road tripping. Mm-hmm. But like driving home, I'm like, I smell. <laughs> I want to be in my bed. You know what Literally I mean? Literally me yesterday coming home from a wedding in Malibu. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like it's horrible. <laughs> like I really I never mind driving somewhere. I but I hate driving home. Yeah. But so I I had driven and we had left really early in the morning. And my dumb ass, you know, we stop, fill the rental car up with gas. We stop at the gas station. My boyfriend wants a Red Bull. And I was like, you know what? I really like those. Um, what are they? Celsius. Oh, you're a Celsius gal. Not anymore. Oh, this never is mind. the last time. Actually, I got two of them because it was two for five. So I was like, oh, two. Perfect. Well, now Celsius is never going to sponsor us. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know what <laughs> crack cocaine you put in those <laughs> drinks, but I was I didn't I drank half of it and I was quivering every cell in my body <laughs> was shaking like I was being sent into space. (laughs) It was so insane. I've never 
ha- like, and I've had. I, I had wish a- everyone could have seen the visual <laughs> you just gave me. <laughs> I had had them before, but I think I'm getting like more caffeine sensitive. Like the older I get, you definitely are. And I also. I don't really drink caffeine. I I used to just force caffeine into my body, and now I don't. Well, now I do when I, but only Diet Coke. But um, <laughs> and even that is like only when it's on sale. So it would be like three months where I'm like really really crazy on Diet Coke, and then I'll just go like three months without having it at all. But I drank half of this bitch, and Andrew even said when I cracked it, cracked her open when we got on the highway. He goes, that is such a bad idea. Why would you ever drink that? And I was like, no, it's all early and we're road tripping. You know what I mean? Like I was like, I had the whole, my whole life in front of me. It's my birthday. And then we're going to Joshua Tree for the first time. Um, and and he I, was right. He was so, I was so, I was quivering and shaking and sweating. I had to like turn the AC on really, really high. And then the most embarrassing part is, so we get to my friend's house, we check out the house, we go to the Joshua Tree Saloon, we have our dog, right? So Andrew stays outside with the dog, I go inside with her to get the drinks. And uh, (laughs) she was like, well, it's your birthday, let me buy you a shot. Mm, Famous last words. And I go, of course. Yeah. Amanda. (laughs) So... They pour the three shots into shot glasses, as one does. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim Beam. That's what we usually take shots of. Of course, yes. I could not lift the shot glass <laughs> to my mouth without spilling. Like, I was shaking so bad. The bartender was looking at me like, "Who's who let... Who let this person in here? Like he's she's like, clearly detoxing from like hard drugs. <laughs> he's like, I don't actually think I should be giving her a shot of Jim Yeah, Beam. and I'm literally going like I'm so embarrassed. And my friend, luckily, my friend Danny knows that I have this affliction. Yes. She's like, <laughs> how many Diet Cokes have you had today? And she's like, it's fine. Hey, can you just pour this one into a big shot, like into a big glass? Pour the shot into a big glass pour so this she doesn't spill it. Pour into a big it. glass for the little baby. For the little shaky baby. <laughs> the sweaty, shaky baby. <laughs> but it was, I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed. Like the way this bartender looked at me was like so embarrassing. Yeah, I'm surprised you never told me that. It was a really crazy trip. <laughs> so that's probably why. Then it happened right at the beginning. So by the end of the trip, I probably just Yeah, kind and you of also like it. every time you do <clears throat> camping stuff, you go off the grid for three days and I don't hear from you. So the funniest part, okay, so like I love camping. I I I really would like to be camping all of the time, basically. Um camping to me is the best vacation because it makes you so thankful when you get home. Like, first of all, it's really fun to do. I like being in the outdoors. I like camping and hiking and all that stuff. Um but then when you get it's a, it's the only vacation when you get home you're like hell yeah. Yeah, you're like I'm in my bed. Yeah, it's not I'm like when you like stuff. stay in a nice resort yeah. and you're like boo hoo I have to go home. It's like oh my god, running water, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it makes you so thankful. I mean, yeah, I get it, but also couldn't be me. Yeah, I know it's not for you. Could but, not yeah. be me. But yeah, so I don't drink Celsius anymore. They're still actually cuz they were 2 for 5. The second you still have the them? second one is still back in the back of my fridge, and every once in a while, I just think <laughs> maybe I should test my fate. Don't, and then I don't think. Don't God. do it ever yeah. again, please. Or you could just take shots of it, like be like one shot, genuinely. Yeah. yeah, like that's all my body can handle. Yeah, but apparently, there's something about like um, energy drinks, like the way they put shit in there, it, like affects your body different. Oh really? Because they have it has like other shit in there, mm. like gu- guarana or whatever. Is no guarana is bat. Poop. I have no idea what gu- bat poop. No, no, no. It's that's not what they put in there. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that's I'm thinking of the wrong word. Oh. I think, but it's like guarana or something that they put in there, and it like makes the caffeine like hit in a new, different, uh, silly way. I just don't get affected by caffeine. I'm really jealous because I. I think it's because I didn't I didn't start drinking caffeine until I was in my like late twenties. Yeah, so I just I, really had no. I definitely started drinking coffee like iced coffee at sixteen. Yeah, I never drank it. And you want to know? It's funny. My dad never drank coffee until he was older too. He didn't start drinking coffee till he was in his thirties. Oh wow! So I think it's just like generationally passed down from generation to generation. Yeah, generationally, I just never had any caffeine resistance built up. Yeah, I love 
<laughs> I love caffeine so much. I ha- I mean, I have definitely over caffeinated myself where I'm shaky, but that's when I'm at like my fifth cold brew. Uh, one time Amanda <laughs> texted oh, me what? and goes, everything's horrible. I'm having the worst day ever and nothing even happened. I don't know what's wrong with me. When was that? Yesterday? I'm so anxious. <laughs> Everything's bad. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And then she goes, wait, is this what being over caffeinated is? And I was like, how many cups of coffee you had? She's like, I've had like five cold brews. And I was like, yeah, you poisoned yourself. Yeah, I did. And then you and then she like had like a realization that she actually she like actually accidentally does that all the time. Well, typically <laughs> I have two to three. Yeah, but That's I'm just like saying an average you like day. you had like a realization that like, oh, this is what this feeling is. It's the coffee's fault. Mm-hmm. And I've. I've done this before and I'll do it again. I wonder of. if that's I wonder if the coffee is what gives me anxiety. Coffee gives me really bad anxiety. Like is that is that the ticket right there? Is that why? It could be cuz you never had anxiety like like growing up. No, I got ang- I started getting anxiety when I was like 18. That yeah. was like the first time, 18, 19. But like even when we lived together, you were very mentally well for the most I part. I was mentally well for the most part oh I mean gosh. as much as a 21 year old can be <laughs> wow which is not saying much I know but I yeah, I just I, remember all the time I because I've had an anxiety disorder since I was like literally a little kid like my, I was to say my first memory ever was having a panic attack yeah um and <laughs> I just remember one time I had a really mm. oh did you spill on yourself espresso martini everywhere that's that you espresso <laughs> oh it's on me espresso <laughs> um but I remember like once trying to explain to you anxiety and you were like, yeah, just don't worry about it. <laughs> and I was like, no, you don't. that's not how it works. There's nothing. I'm not even worried about anything. I'm worried. I'm worried about being alive. That is truly such a crazy thing to think that I would ever say based on how I've lived my life for the past eight or nine years. Yeah. Well, it's because I like I'd quit smoking, but I, I had bought a pack because my anxiety was really bad. And I was like, out, I was like smoking, I remember. And you were like, why are you smoking? And I was like, my anxiety has been so bad this last week that I'm like literally trying anything. Like I'm willing to try anything. And like, this is my last straw. <laughs> and you were like, what are you worried about? And I was like, what do you mean? Because like that that concept didn't make any sense to me because I was like, you don't have to have any. You could just right. be worried. Oh, I know it all too well yeah. now. Yes, I do. I'm like, you can just be worried about nothing, it turns out. And you were like. I mean, everything's good. I don't get it. <laughs> and you were like so confused. And oh so that's gosh. why when you first started being like, I have anxiety now, I was like, who is this bitch? Can I please turn back the fucking clock? Turn back and time. go back to that, Amanda? <laughs> please. <laughs> I used to have panic attacks about death a lot. I, d- I still have them sometimes, but I don't have them as much. But it would just be like an over, like I would wake up in the middle of the night, like overwhelming feeling oh. of like one day I'm going to die. I and have I- those every day. And I told Amanda about it and she goes, just don't think about it. Maybe you fucking cursed me. I didn't Maybe do this you to you. gave me anxiety. You put this in my brain. You were telling me all the stories <laughs> about all of your anxiety and all your panic attacks. And then it just like got into my body it took me over <laughs> you, you you got anxiety via like symbiosis <laughs> like you ruined my life there you go i said it cassidy j liston ruined my life wow if there's any other Flip victims it. of cassidy j liston don't call for that your <laughs> do not put that call to action out because if you have any horrible stories about amanda goodness feel free to come oh, forward with those for sure <laughs> that's the thing I'm a self-aware queen. I know who people hate me. <laughs> well, it's so funny. We were actually talking to Kate about that not long ago because she goes, well, thank God you guys like never built your platform off of like being like the nicest, whatever. Like you guys both are very transparent about like being psycho. Well, and also like <laughs> I grew up super conservative Christian. I was like a lot of internalized misogyny. Like there's nothing anyone could say where I wouldn't be like, yeah, I not only am not that anymore i feel like we talk we definitely talk about uh all of our flaws and all of our past flaws like so often that there's really i don't think there's any surprises anymore um yeah yeah i think that's you know what true. i mean like we're yeah. pretty open we're very open yeah yeah but to me i'm like so I'm, i've always been kind of like an open book about everything in my life with my friends whatever um, 
What was I even trying to say? That that's it, really. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever like listen to the podcast or your editing or you listen back later on and you're like, oh, my God, why am I just like so OK with saying these things to thousands of strangers? No, I, that, I guess that's like kind of what I was like. Yeah, saying. that's like, what I feel like I, you were trying I've to get I've always at. been an open book about everything in my life to people like I don't get em- to me, I'm like, the only way you can be embarrassed is if you think something's like embarrassing and like a secret, right? Yeah. And then, but yeah, sometimes I'm like editing the podcast. I'm like, whoo, okay. Probably, probably a couple hundred thousand people didn't need to know that. Oh, all the time. <laughs> all the time. I think that I go, wow, I can't believe But I'm... it's too late because it's too funny. No, that's what it's I'm saying. too funny to cut that's it. That's the issue. Yeah. Is that our embarrassing moments are so funny that I'm like, well, I'm not going to tell her to cut that. Yeah. It's too good. It's too funny. You know? Yeah. Like I could tell everybody that I bleached my hair and it's orange underneath this baseball cap right now. And that's fucking embarrassing. Uh, But I'm transparent. An an hour before a (laughs) wedding. She was like, now's the time to try to bleach my hair for the first time ever. Yesterday. (laughs) Like, why did you do that? That was such a crazy decision. Guys. You did. Your roots weren't even bad. That's the weirdest part. No, I know. No, I told you. Okay. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go crazy. Me and, me, and Kate, me and Kate were out watching the uh, football games when you sent those texts. And we were we both like looked up at each other because we we're at the same bar. We looked up at each other like, what the hell is going on? Okay, every couple of months I get when I'm PMSing, I get into this like manic, like, I don't know. Something just like takes over my body. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not me anymore, I think. So I woke up yesterday and I had to go to a wedding in Malibu and I was like I can bleach my roots I can do this the best part was so at like 10 a.m yeah she's texting me and Kate being like we are supposed to leave at 2 p.m on the dot and now people are texting me saying they're not going to be to my house until 2 15 and I and like we're saying like it's a wedding like you literally like and I'm the one being mad I'm the one going she's so mad it's a wedding you can't miss the ceremony you have to be there on time I'm saying that she's going like I planned a wedding I know what it's like and we were like yeah we were like backing her up like yeah leave their asses like yeah <laughs> like I was gonna leave them and they she doesn't leave until after three because she fucked up her hair no, i literally t- i literally said if you guys don't go right now i'm gonna fucking have a panic attack and you guys gotta go you have to make it to the ceremony and then did you miss the ceremony i missed the ceremony but i literally got there three i got there while they were doing their like you may now kiss the bride so i wasn't too too far off thank god yeah how great what a but, crazy uh, yeah i am wearing a baseball cap to cover my <laughs> Horrible, horrible. It's a little orange. Bleaching <laughs> situation. Um, we don't quite know how we're going to fix it yet, but no. Next week, when when we we're going to rebleach it, and I'm going to tone it and do everything next week, and it's going to be it's going to look fine. We're just gonna, we're just trying to make sure that my hair doesn't fall out. That's the biggest. Yes. That's the number that one the goal. situation at hand right now. So I think you know what? Maybe I did ruin you because like. You having the confidence to do your own hair. Where the fuck, where the fuck did I get off thinking I could do that? Because I feel like maybe you are like, well, Cassidy just cuts her own hair and does her own yes. hair. Maybe I can do it too. No, 100%. I was like, how hard can it be? Cassidy doesn't. She's a fucking idiot. I mean, I didn't <laughs> say that. You said it. But <laughs> I did think to myself, Cassidy does her own hair all the time and it looks good. So I can clearly do this. And then I just watched a bunch of TikToks. And I'm like, oh, my God, all these girls on You're TikTok. Like, are all of these TikTok girls do it. And they're all so easy. idiots. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is so freaking easy. Look at this. If I get one more fucking phone call about this election, I'm going to I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's going to be smash bad. your phone. Smash I'm going to smash it. Jason Kelsey style. Smash your phone. Um, but yes, I couldn't believe it. Guys, do you know how many times I have fixed Amanda's hair? Yeah, a lot. Uh, uncountable. Because this is what happens. And do you know? Do you realize that every single time I get into that mode, I do something to my hair? Remember when you cut all your hair off and you try to give yourself like a bob? That was after my cat died, and it was so <laughs> short in the back. No, it I was. Had to- <laughs> it was not only short, but it was angled like it was like diagonal, <laughs> and just it was like- <laughs> so many shapes. It was, and she goes. How bad is it? Because it's on the back of her head. Because she tried to just freestyle cut the back of her head. 
And so I have like real shears and stuff. She comes over to my house crying, crying, crying. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it even. It's going to be short because that's how short you cut it. But it's going to be even. And she goes, I don't care if it's short. I don't care if it's short. I just, just, I just don't want to have to shave my head. I'm like, you got it. And I literally she like pulls the, she's wearing like a beanie, I think it was, pulls the beanie off and goes, how bad is it? And it was 18 different Yeah, shapes. it was like zigzagged across the back of my head. And I was like, <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> We're gonna be fine. Or the time that I But it ended up looking really cute actually. It did look really cute. Yeah. Um or the time <laughs> that I also had a panic attack and decided I was going to box dye my hair blue, blue. at like eleven PM one night and then it turned out to be green. very green. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know why this I don't know why I do these things. I can't explain it either. I really don't know. The funniest part to me is, um, like, with you bleaching your roots, mm -hmm. what did you think the bleach was going to do? Because you said you washed your hair. I don't know. I just said hair like that. <laughs> Wash Because I was going to say head, and then I said hair. <laughs> you washed your hair the second that it started to look orange. Yes. But that's... I forgot that that was that, the that's process. That's the process. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Sorry, it's just so funny. <laughs> and then the worst part is, after I washed it and it was orange on my head, like it look, literally looked like macaroni yeah. on my head, um, uh, my husband comes home from work and he goes, oh, if I had just come home 10 <laughs> minutes earlier, I would have told you not to do this. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and I was like, well, we're too late now, aren't we? Listen, I used to be the queen of half a bottle of wine and a haircut to myself right mm -hmm. but I think also the problem is I don't care well I mean hey I think we can all agree that I was pretty calm no you were shocking for me no I just mean like I actually like I will walk around with a I'll walk around with a botched haircut and just be like whatever you would walk around with what's under my hat right now I have <laughs> <laughs> I've been bleaching my own hair for 15 years. I absolutely have. <laughs> One time I walked into Sally Beauty and I was buying more bleach because I'd fucked up my hair so bad, but I had to wait a couple days to, to dye it. And um, <laughs> the guy looks at me and he's like checking it out. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like pointed at the stuff like, you, you know why I'm here. And he was like, oh, I didn't want to. And I was like, no, no, it's OK. Like We're all aware. I'm not fucking stupid. <laughs> I just figured I only did my roots at least. I mean, there's like a couple spots in the back that are also orange, but we're not going to talk about those right now. Um, but I can cover it like it's headband covers it. Yeah. Headband helps. So we're good for at least a, a little while. Uh, one time when I was 23, I remember I used to rock that really tight bob. Yes. So I used to rock like a really short like bob to my chin, basically, and like baby bangs. Yeah. almost. It was a good haircut. And on one you. time I... And I always did it myself. I mm -hmm. cut it myself. And one time I gave myself such crooked bangs. <laughs> and I posted a picture with my crooked bangs and said, I like my bangs crooked just like my teeth. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. But, like, I don't fucking care. I was like, this is somehow punk. Honestly, though, you could pull it off. <laughs> you could. And guess what? I do fucking like my crooked teeth because I hated them for so long. <laughs> and then now I've just come into, like, actually, it's kind of fucking cool because everyone has the same dumb veneer teeth. And now I get my cool, unique teeth. So fuck you. That's gross. It's punk. Gross, baby. That's, I thought you said gross with a, like a gross. list, but I was like, that was rude. <laughs> it's gross. It's gross. <laughs> um, oh. Well, now that we told you guys a bunch of embarrassing oh, yeah. things. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if, yeah, if you're feeling bad about yourself. Um, if you're feeling sad or bad about yourself, literally just think about what's under my baseball just cap think right about now. Us. I'm not showing it to you guys because it's really embarrassing, but you can just imagine it. Okay. You can imagine it. You can imagine it's it. It's exactly what you think it's, it's going to look like. It's pretty much what you think it looks like. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, thank some people who bought us some beers. How about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this isn't beer money. This is um, <laughs> fix Amanda's hair money. Please. All right. So uh, this, this is from Eric. Hi, Eric. Oh, sorry. Erica. Oh, Erica. Sorry. I'm reading a um, username. And I didn't know if the A was part of the last name or the first name, but now that I'm looking at it, got it. It's clearly Erica. Uh, Erica says, "Hey, wanted to buy you guys some drinks as a thank you. I've been having some health issues and a tough time mentally. Your podcast makes me laugh 
very loud and helps me take my mind off of everything. You ladies are so awesome. Cheers from Nos- Nova Scotia. Ooh. Okay. Well, Erica, I really hope that you remember what we just said. Um, think about my hair. Erica, when, <laughs> when Amanda's call to action comes to fruition, I'm going to need you on the front lines defending yeah, me. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, but thank you. I'm really sorry about your your tough time and your health issues that really sucks. And I'm glad that we can be there to help you during that time. Cause I know I've definitely had podcasts and shows that mm-hmm. did that for me. Yes. Same. For example, on Saturday I was pissed off about, about politics. Okay. Yes. And I was like, I need to do anything but this. I need to not look, I need to not look at Twitter. I need to not look at anything. And uh, Buffy saved me once again. Buffy. I put on the musical episode. Fantastic. And it literally turned my night around. And I ended up having a great night. Great. We love to hear that. I was home alone. Oh. Which, like, you know, if you, like, live with your partner, like, ooh. Yeah, it's nice. I'm home alone. Yeah, you feel like you can, like, eat a little sneaky treat. Oh, I got the biggest Chipotle bowl you've ever seen in your life. (laughs) And I just slowly ate it all night, which is my favorite way to eat Chipotle. I don't think Chipotle is a sit-down meal. It's basically... Um, a burrito charcuterie bowl. Okay. Like I like slowly eat it. I get the chips and guac and I just like slowly pick away at it all night in front of me. Got it. Which is also my just I, I like that's how I <laughs> would like to eat everything is <laughs> like slow. I'm not like a sit down and eat a big meal. I'm like a put it in front of me and I slowly will pick at it all night. Yeah. Um. So I did that. and It was awesome. Fantastic. And there's nobody in my ear going. Why don't you just eat it? Or are you gonna finish? That? Are you gonna finish that? I would yeah. like to eat that. Yeah. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, I do know what you mean. <laughs> um, and I would like to say thank you to Lemon Berry Imaginaries, oh, who bought us some beers and said, "Have some drinks on me and toast them to my thirty second birthday today." Happy birthday! You're right in between me and Amanda. That's oh my cute. Goodness. Oh yeah, 31, 32, 31, 32, 33. Uh, Also, I was the one. I was the one in the King Julian costume on Instagram. Loved they tagged it. us in that. Fantastic. So good. Uh, love you guys. Love you too. Also, great costume. Yeah, not enough of you tagged us in the costumes of your dogs or yourselves. I'm really Yeah, I got a couple DMs, but not enough. Um, Butter. Was that the name of? The- oh, yeah. I think it was Butters. Butters. Butters or Butter? I don't remember if it was Butter or Butters, but obsessed with that dog. Uh, thank you, Karen, for tagging us in that. <laughs> so cute. I was like... I, it looked fake. That dog looked fake. Yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say thank you to our new patrons. Yeah. Hannah C. Hi, Hannah. Erica G. Hi, Erica. And Cloud K. Hello, Cloud. I don't know why I felt like saying it like that. <laughs> Cloud. And I also wanted to say, because we missed it on accident, uh, Maya's birthday was on the 22nd. Oh. One of our cool kids. And... I didn't realize because they we just missed the the, the message, message yeah until it was too late. But happy late birthday, happy belated! Thank you for being a cool kid. We totally appreciate you. We do. And speaking of birthdays, oh, we got some more. Let me just give you a little little couple here. Um, so I wanted to say happy birthday to Kaylee from Neve, who is another one of our oh, very yes. special friends. Um, so Neve wanted to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, I love that. You both wished each other happy birthday. That's always That's so cute. True friendship right it is. there. It's really cute. Um, and then also today, while we were recording, it is a very special person's birthday. Kadra, our Kedra. friend from Perplexity Mysteries Podcast. Oh my gosh, I need to text her. I didn't realize it was today. It is today. I can't believe it's already November. That's crazy. I know. It's wild. But we love Kadra. Kadra, we love you. We're so excited to go to Texas for your wedding next year. It's going to be really yes. fun. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I hope everybody is really excited for the holiday season. You know it. We got our eating pants on. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Every year I'm like, I'm going to dress cute for Thanksgiving. And then I always end up wearing sweats. You gotta. I'm sorry. what's the point? So we always go to my boyfriend's parents' house, which is not far from us. That's why we go for Thanksgiving, because we don't have enough time to travel out Mm -hmm. of town. And oh me, oh my. We usually stay over the night before. And so I just like sleep in sweats, wake up the next morning. Immediately there's a mimosa in my hand. Of course. Thank you, Margaret. She's usually the one pouring it. And then it's just football, snacks, appetizers. So this is going to be a casual Thanksgiving because I'm not used to that. What do you mean? 
I'm used to like having to dress up. I don't dress up. Great. I love that. Yeah. Genuinely love no, that. No, I literally, <laughs> last, last year I think I wore leggings and like a big t-shirt. Fantastic. That's yeah. what I will do. I mean, you can look cute if you would like to. No. But I like to be comfortable on eating no, holidays. I don't want, I don't want to look cute. You know what? Actually, I like to be comfortable on every holiday. I like to be comfortable every day. I don't think I, I don't like dressing up that much anymore. Weddings are the only thing that can get me out. And I'm like, nice. Yeah, I like and to I'm dress like, up. Because there's not too many of them. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to do. Still fun. But like when I feel obligated to dress up for like a holiday or something, I'm like, Ew, this yeah, I agree. stinks. It stinks. Yeah. Uh. All right. So we have kind of a fun little <laughs> different situation going on today. Yes. For the episode. So um, I don't know. <laughs> how you guys feel but um <laughs> watching everything about the election has made me want to go into hiding permanently mm -hmm. and um it has not been fun and amanda had a wedding last night and she was stressed and she made her hair orange yeah I, you know just <laughs> uh did all that stuff yesterday so i've been trying to fight with people on twitter and nobody will engage with me it's like been a really rough, rough week oh yeah if you want to fight on twitter please oh, this is why <laughs> you're what you're doing when you're home alone like oh i'm so excited i'm home alone fight with people on twitter yeah i'm devious <laughs> during <laughs> That laugh is scary. <laughs> like that's genuinely scary. Because I'm thinking about <laughs> thinking Ooh. about all the things that I tweeted at people uh, during the 2016 election, and I, I, you know, that was back when I could find joy in in uh, in the horribleness of the politics. But I just can't anymore. No, I'm too old. Yeah, you're too. It's old. It's all just depressing. At Don't this do point. it. <laughs> too old. Amanda, I was texting Amanda that I was having a hard time because I felt like every story I looked up was really depressing and I'm already feeling really sad. I've been crying like way too much. Um, and so she said, well, I was planning on covering animals that run for office. Because that's fun and silly. Because that's fun and silly. And she goes, and it's election week and this is like a fun twist on elections. And she said, what if you do a few and I do a few? Because they're usually short stories, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Um, and I was like, oh, my God, yes, this is the best idea. Perfect. Amanda, you're a genius. I I love when I have a good idea. Yeah. It's pretty well, good. And it's like perfect timing mm -hmm. because like you fucked up the hair, right? So you feel like really stupid. Yes, I do. Thank and you then, for reminding me. No, but then you have like this great idea <laughs> and you you save your reputation. I saved my reputation. This definitely cancels out the hair. Does it? For sure. Well, we'll see what happens tomorrow when I wake up and realize that the hair is still like this. Rut row. In the famous words of Scooby Doo, rut row. Rut row. <laughs> oh boy, Scoob. That Scoob. wasn't good. That wasn't good. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why I always like attempt to do an impression. It never works out. So I'm I'm done with that. You should have stuck with Jinkies. You Jinky, you can't fuck that one up, right? Yeah, not really. Because we're freestyling. Because we bit are today. free balling, baby. There's like a ninety percent chance I'm gonna cry. Great, I love this. During really any three of the stories that I have Fantastic. picked out for you today. <laughs> uh, so, how about you begin? Let's hear your first okay. one. Oh my god, I'm literally already just thinking <laughs> about him. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna be talking about Mayor Max. The uh, way you're literally actually no, already yeah, crying. Like, I'm already like I'm so misty. Okay, <laughs> I do love Max. I do know Max a little bit. Um, so anybody who knows me personally knows that one of my favorite towns to visit, to camp in, to hang out in is Idlewild, California. Mm -hmm. It's about an hour and a half, hour forty five minutes from LA. It's like right by where a lot of the casinos are in California, like on the native land. And I just love it. I think it's really beautiful up there. She is always sending me. Um, I really want to move there. Zillow zestimates of Idlewild I'm, houses. <laughs> I'm getting so zesty about those <laughs> estimates. I want to live there so bad. Like, if Amanda would move to Idlewild and like be my neighbor tomorrow, I would move. I know you. But would. I literally can't leave her. So here we are. <laughs> That's why I'm sending her so many zestimates. I'm like, think about it. You could own a house. You're like, think about these zestimates right now. I'm like, aren't you feeling zesty? Mm -hmm. we'll so see, we'll <laughs> see if we end up making more money from the podcast, and then maybe I'm feeling zesty. I don't know. Well, here's the thing: if it's a if the rent is so much lower than here, and you get so much more space, 
you know, then the podcast money goes further. True. You're not wrong. You know I mean? You're not wrong. And we're still only an hour and a half from Long Beach, which we love Long Beach. We could come back all the time. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to convince you guys to move to Idaho. <laughs> don't move there and make it expensive. I'm that's my idea. Yeah, that's true. Don't I do it. I stole that. Do not steal it's my idea. It's a terrible idea. place. Don't do it. But yeah, so I go there all the time. I go there like at least once a year, usually more. And one of the things that I always tell people when they ask me why I want to move there is because their mayor is a dog. The best possible idea for a mayor. Yeah. So Idlewild is a pretty small community. There's only about 4,000 people who live there permanently, but it is a very popular, you know, getaway spot for people who live in the Los Angeles or Southern California area. Think of like kind of like a more hippie version of like Big Bear. Love it. It's like very hippy dippy there. Like they have a little town square and like everything's a little like it's basically where like all the old hippies go to retire, which once again, dream location. (laughs) Tons of great hiking and tons of great camping. It's probably my favorite camping spot in all of Southern California. I absolutely love it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they don't have a mayor. Well, they do. Well, yeah. It's a dog. They didn't have a mayor. Sorry. Let me <laughs> let me. I was like, correct I'm myself. sorry. <laughs> so they did not have a mayor. And so a local charity, like a um, like shelter, decided to be like, well, we need a mayor. We don't have a mayor. Mm-hmm. So we're going to run an election. And the only rule is you can't be a human to be nominated. I love it. So 14 dogs and two cats. All ran against each other. How do you how do you choose? Oh my gosh! I, they were campaigning. People like had posters up and pictures. I wouldn't even know how to pick. Yeah, and the way that they raised money was it was a dollar per vote. Uh, okay, I and like it. They ended up raising over thirty thousand dollars for this local animal charity. Wow! Yeah, and they were able to save and um and get fixed like tons of animals and strays and all that stuff. It like actually did like wonders for this yeah, community. That's amazing. But people really got, like, really into it. I would. Yeah. And so this one dog (laughs) is a golden retriever. I know. Yeah. I know. (laughs) Max, he, everybody loved him. So he was a nine-year-old golden retriever. He was nine? Mm -hmm. And he, his full name is Maximus Mighty Dog Mueller. And his humans are were a married cu- or are a married couple, and they like ran this whole campaign. They were like, you know, like it had all these like catchphrases for him and like p- just pictures of him and like you know how like stupid cute golden retrievers are like. And when I say stupid, I actually mean like they look so dumb. That's why yeah, they, that's why they're so cute. I literally have one in my living room right yeah, now. Yeah, they like always have their <laughs> tongue out and they're just like they're just like happy to be there. Yeah, right, always. And so this dog ends up winning in a landslide. In a landslide. Landslide. I got to see what he, I got to see who he was running against. 24,000 votes for this dog. Wow. And so he starts his <laughs> his reign, his as, reign mayor. as mayor and he is only a year and a half into his his first term <laughs> when unfortunately on April 2nd, 2013, Mayor Max died <gasps> of ca- cancer. Which is very common for golden retrievers. They die of cancer usually around like 9, 10, 11. Can you not? Because I literally have a golden retriever. Sorry. sorry. Um, so what they did is they went and adopted a new golden retriever, named him Maximus Mighty Dog Mueller II. And he came to Idlewild on July 21st and completed the remainder of the original Mayor Max's term. I don't like that they just thought they could replace him. Well, unfortunately, this Mayor Max, once again, Golden Retriever, the also, next mayor? also died of cancer. Cassidy! It's common in them. Oh, my God. Okay. And everybody was really upset, and they thought, well, should we do another election? What should we do? And everybody in the town was like, no. Maybe pick a younger dog. Well, they, they were like, no, we want another Mayor Max. So the couple the Mueller's actually they adopted two more golden retrievers a girl and a boy and they named him Maximus Mighty Dog Mueller the third and he took over in 2022 uh as the new mayor and his deputy mayor or assistant mayor is his sister whose name is Meadow Mighty Dog Mueller 
And so they say that they have uh, the mayor and the spayer <laughs> because she will take over if anything happens to her brother. Oh. But they are the cutest little things in the entire world. Everybody in town, like if – so the mayor goes – out into the town three days a week to meet with people, get pets, of course, and uh, like do his mayor mayoral duties. He has some, he has some duties, oh, literally. Yeah. He actually does. Oh, I was gonna say he has oh, to he do has his duty. Yeah, he also has those <laughs> kind of duties. He has a dog, but he also shows up to local businesses. He shows up to like if a if a new business is opening, you better believe the mayor is gonna the be there. Ma- if I'm gonna open a business and the mayor is not there, I'm gonna be real pissed. Well, and all the local business people are stoked on it because if the mayor shows up people literally drive from los angeles to like go to these events just i'm about to, meet. to do that yeah just to meet max the third and his sister meadow should we go don't have to pull my leg i literally <laughs> love idlewild i really want to meet max and meadow and they're like the most gentle sweet all the videos of them are so cute he literally like loves to put so he, they like bring out a truck and he loves to, and you can like pose with him behind you. He loves to jump on people's shoulders, like put his little paws on the shoulders for to pose for pictures. And they decked out their whole truck as the Max Mobile, the Mayor Mobile. And so they have like Mayor Max all over the truck. And then they have like where he always sits in the back seat. He, they have like a little arrow pointing to his window because he st- that's where he sticks his head out. And everybody like freaks out when they see him. And they're like, yeah, we just... Like, this is a labor of love for us, like the humans. Mm -hmm. They're like, we don't make money off of this. This is not beneficial to us in any way besides the fact that we just, like, love these dogs. And we also know that it helps local businesses. And they bring people joy. Mm -hmm. So increased revenue for the town um, was so significant after Max that people always like to joke, like, oh, he's the best mayor any town could have because he actually, like, makes money. Yeah. Um, And over a million people have come to Idlewild to wow. see a- a- any three of the Mayor Maxes. Okay, but you can go visit, but don't move there. I swear to God, if you move there. Don't do it. That's my idea. <laughs> I trademarked it. It's uh, uh, the, the paperwork is pending <laughs> on the idea, okay? Part but- of me does feel like, like, I don't know if I could, like, if my dog died, I don't know if I could name a new dog that I get the same name. Yeah. You know, like that would be weird. Yeah. No, I get it. Sorry, I'm looking up a picture of Mayor Max yes, for you. Yes, please. Um, no, I get that. But also I think it's like at this point there's like a lineage. Yeah, I get it. They, You're going to freak out. Oh, yeah. Uh, they have an Instagram account. has over 100,000 followers. Fucking popular. So here's Meadow. Pretty baby. They are brother and sister, so they look almost identical. Like it's like hard to even tell them apart. And that's Max. Hi, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. Oh, my gosh. We'll have these pictures on Instagram and on the YouTube, obviously. <laughs> this, I just, I love people that talk like they're dogs. Oh, I actually hate that. So, but I think it's so I will funny. let it slide if you're the mayor, okay? <laughs> I am up to mischief today. <laughs> it's just so funny. See, that I don't mind. I don't like it when they do like the doggo voice i mean he's the mayor like the misspelling like sorry <laughs> look at that fucking face oh, I love him. but they all it's crazy like he, look at him he's in a sidecar oh my god with sunglasses and a tie they make they make calendars with him and all of his siblings um because he ha- has cousins and siblings that work as his his panel like his <laughs> as they should yeah <laughs> <laughs> on policy politics <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah so they do like and they give them out for free to like kids and stuff so yeah. once again like these people are not trying to make money like there's there's really nothing and they um he wears like a little tie as you saw in some of the pictures and so they made little ties of the different types of ties that he wears so that people can take pictures of their own dogs wearing the tie or they give them out to little kids and the little kids walk around with the little ties on it's so cute you know you might have just convinced me to move to Idlewild I'm, <laughs> so. that is so once again cuz my boyfriend loves Idlewild too every time we talk about moving there people are like why Idlewild and Andrew goes well first of all their dog's a mayor <laughs> 
<laughs> their, their mayor's, mayor's a dog. dog. Sorry, <laughs> dyslexic. <laughs> their mayor's a dog. And usually people are like, oh, I get it. I yeah, get it. <laughs> I mean, that's really all you need, yeah. I feel like. Why? What else could you ever ask Why, for? Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Um, so he is still the reigning mayor. Once again, this family, they basically said like, hey, as long as you are willing to take care of the Maxes, we're willing to have a Max as our mayor. I love it. And like I said, the family just does it because for the love of the game, dude. You gotta. Yeah, they own like a marketing firm. So they're like, yeah, this is like obviously the best marketing that could ever happen for our town that we love. And most of the money that comes into Idlewild is tourism. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so that is my first little tail tale <laughs> of politics about mayor max who i would die for i would also absolutely die for him 100 like, percent. if i could be in his secret service and take a bullet for him i would say what a what a beautiful way to die no absolutely yeah mm -hmm. i'd be like the mayor's coming he's coming in over over and out everyone the, make way the eagle has landed the eagle has landed <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, so I that was him. the first one about one of my favorite places and obviously just the cutest little cuties. He's very cute. Yeah. Yeah, extremely. Yeah. <laughs> and all three of them, they all looked really, really similar, which is the Yeah, they all part. have that like smushy golden face. Yes, they have the smushy yeah. golden face. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to guess they get them from the same breeder because it's like a local breeder. So they definitely are all related, you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well... Let's dive into my first one. Yes, please. Which is, there are some similarities between yours and mine, but also a lot of differences as well. Okay. So we're going to talk about Clay Henry. Okay. So in the 1980s, mm -hmm. in the small town of Lajitas in West Texas, the locals began to notice that there was this goat in town named Clay Henry. I love goats so much. They're I such, literally talk love about goats. stupid animals. I love them. They're so stupid. They're so stupid. And I just love that they scream oh, like humans. They like it's do. weird. Yeah. Like, ah! <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> and I think this town was like kind of like known for its goats because one of their biggest uh, saloons or bars in town was like the Goat Tavern. Got it. Okay. So it was kind of just known for goats. Um, but Clay Henry specifically was a goat that people knew because he loved to drink beer. Based. Based? Based. What's that mean? Like, cool. Oh. Is this a Gen Z term? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. You've nope. never heard of based? Nope. Like, based God? It's not even, I don't even know if it's Gen Z. Like, that's like younger millennial. I've never heard people that have been saying in my that. life. People have been saying that since, like, I was in my 20s. Wow. Yeah. Well, you taught me something new today. Yeah, it means like cool, like, oh, that, that goat is based. That goat is based. Yeah. All right, I like it. Goat has its own whole thing. Everybody wow. knows that. Yeah. Greatest of all time. That's right. And Clay Henry was. <laughs> so, obviously, a beer drinking goat, that's pretty fucking cool. Killer, yeah, we love it. Um, It's based, as it's Cassidy based. says. <laughs> And he soon became a huge tourist attraction for people. So they would come into town from all over and they would come specifically to have a beer with Clay. Of course. I would love to have a beer with him. He even drank a beer once with Willie Nelson. Whoa. It's pretty fucking based. cool. Based. Based goat, <laughs> if you ask me. It's, that's a based goat that's right there. That's a based goat. <laughs> so Clay was so popular that in 1986... He was elected the mayor of Lajitas. And during his time as mayor, he would drink about 40 beers a day. He loved his beer. <laughs> so many beers. So he, that would kill a common man. Yeah, but he's not but a common not a man. He's goat. the greatest of all time. Yeah, he's a based goat. He's you know a goat I mean? goat. <laughs> he's the goat of the goats. So he could actually drink them himself. Like people didn't have to give them to him or yeah. pour them down his mouth. He would literally just grab the bottle with his mouth, flip it up in the air above his head and fucking chug that shit down in less than 10 seconds. Okay. So if you wanted to have a chugging contest with him, he'd probably win. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. And this is a based goat. We're he's talking the about. goat. Okay. <laughs> now the only problem with having a drunk goat as your mayor <laughs> is that there's only one. There's a, 
I mean, yeah, there's the, there's the <laughs> one big problem, you know what I mean? Which is that sometimes he would get into some fights and he would start headbutting people. Who hasn't? I know Cassidy does. He put 40 beers. If Cassidy drinks 40 beers and chugs them in less than 10 seconds, she will be headbutting and fighting people. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> 40 beers and so many beers who was paying for these beers he's the mayor oh that's true you think he has to pay for the beer <laughs> what? what's the point of being mayor if you have to pay for your own beer if i was mayor and i had to pay for a drink i'd be like you're all fired like, this town sucks this town fucking, blows. I'm fucking moving this is not based <laughs> this is the opposite of based <laughs> um so clay henry He's so popular. He's the mayor. He's running shit. He's drinking his beers. And he ends up having a son with a lovely lady goat. Um, and his name was Clay Henry Jr. Because he is a narcissistic asshole <laughs> and decided to name his... Had to name his kid after, kid himself. after himself. He was about 40 beers deep. <laughs> and he said, that's Clay Henry Jr. <laughs> he was like, my name must live on. <laughs> Everyone's like, sir, please don't. They're like, we actually did not want to name him that, but <laughs> Clay Henry insisted. I don't know what to tell you. Um, and these two were two peas in a pod. Clay Henry Jr. took after his father because he they also... They usually do. <laughs> he also loved to drink beer. They usually do. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Like father, like goat. Like father, like goat. <laughs> Um, he loved to drink beer and he loved to get in a good tussle and love some, and the little headbutting action. You know what I mean? <laughs> but unfortunately, in 1992, Clay Henry and Clay Henry Jr. had a little too much to drink one day. Okay. <laughs> and they ended up getting into a brawl over another female goat that they both <gasps> were into. Oh, my god! Father and son. They saw this goat and they were like, she's fucking hot. I've seen that video online before. <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> and Clay Henry Jr. ended up killing his own father <gasps> in this brawl. Oh, my gosh. It's like Macbeth. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the OG, Clay Henry, who was the mayor of this town for years, they ended up stuffing his body and putting him on display with a beer bottle in his mouth. <laughs> he died how he lived. And you can still see him there, by the way, today. Brawling and drinking. <laughs> Brawling and drinking. So Clay Henry Jr., he becomes the new mayor of Lajitas, which, I don't know, did he do this on purpose to be the mayor? I don't know. Um, political dynasty. You never know. But when Clay Henry Jr. died in 1996, his son, Clay Henry III, became the new mayor. So kind of like Max, we got a long line of Clay Henry. Was he trying to turn turn the, the town around? Was he also a beer drinking? Um, so to my knowledge, he he was sober. Oh no no no, he wasn't. Just oh, kidding. Okay. I lied. He he also drank beer. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, those generational traumas are hard to break. Yeah, he he liked beer. And in two thousand, this stupid fucking human named Jim Bob Hargrove. Oh god, fucking Jim Bob. That's like, that's like such a stereotypical like, I know country ass name. Country ass name. Jim yeah. Bob J Hargrove. Jim Bob Hargrove. <laughs> he attacked and castrated <gasps> Clay Henry the Third. He ended the bloodline. And do you want to know why he did it? Why? Because he was jealous that Clay Henry was allowed to drink beer on Sundays when the local law prohibited the sale of alcohol. Oh, so now you take a man's balls because mm -hmm. you can't have beer on Sunday? Yeah, because he was like, what? the mayor's drinking beer on Sunday. Why can't I drink beer on Sunday? It's like, because he's the mayor. He's clearly the mayor. He's literally the mayor. And what you think, you can take his balls, but you can't take his beers. I'll tell exactly. you that. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Um, because Clay Henry the Third, although unable to have a son of his own now, because he was castrated, he did remain the mayor until 2008. And then he ended up falling ill, and he decided he was going to leave his position in peace. Well, who's mayor now? Funny you ask. <laughs> <laughs> I love this story. It's amazing. In 2014, a direct descendant of the original Clay Henry, Clay Moore Henry, was elected as mayor of the we town. We got a cousin in the mix? 
Um, he is a sober goat, but that's probably for the best. I say bring back the drunk goats. You know what? They seem to be doing okay with, with the sober one. So uh, <laughs> Clay Moore Henry is the mayor of... Uh, to Clay Moore to, Henry. To Clay Moore Henry and to all the Clay Henrys. To all of those drunk goats out those there. Those drunk idiots. Who hasn't been 30 to 40 beers deep? <laughs> And, and headbutted some and, people. And, and <laughs> murdered your own father. Oh. <laughs> That's what he did. That is what he did. And then that other guy was definitely 30 to 40 beers deep and then castrated a goat. Probably. How to castrate him? Do you know like what the method was? Do you use a rubber it band? Did not, it, it, Cassidy, it did not go that far in okay. the story. <laughs> Sorry. <I'm> just curious. <laughs> rubber band method's very interesting. Well, that was great. Thank you so much. I love him. So, I love I love this this goat this goated goat. After we finish all of these, we should decide who we would vote to be president. Ooh, like if they were all running, yeah, against each other. Yeah, okay, okay, I like that. I like that. All right, I like that a lot. <laughs> well, next on the ballot, <laughs> we have Stubbs. Ooh, Stubbs. Good name, right? That is a really good name. <laughs> so, <laughs> Stubbs. <laughs> I feel like this is. <laughs> the drunk is sewed. I don't know what's going on. I'm not even drunk. I'm just, oh, I can't. You're just having a great time. Just, I'm having a really good time. I love yeah. that. And it's good. I needed this so bad. Like, I'm not kidding. And I, like, so we don't talk, I mean, we uh, we do true crime and stuff. Like, so politics come up, or whatever. We don't talk about politics like a lot on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly because if you follow me on any social media or whatever, you already know where I politically stand. I also think that if you listen to anything I say, you know where I politically stand. I whatever. would say so, yes. Um, but I also don't think it is my right or whatever to like tell you who to vote for. Mm, I agree. Yeah. Like I don't it, like you. If you are voting for somebody based on what I like, me saying, well, I'm voting for this person. You should be doing your own research and whatever, and finding who aligns with you, whatever. I would hope it aligns with me, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you should vote for all of these animals. <laughs> Absolutely. But like, but it's, I've been having a really hard time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's been really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why we're trying to lighten the mood this week. No. And that's why I'm like so happy that. That I'm a genius. That you're a genius. <laughs> and that I'm thinking about these, you know, I already voted. <laughs> it's none of my business anymore. <laughs> um, and now I get to think about these cool animals. Like, for example, Stubbs. Stubbs. Let's uh, talk about but it. But I just wanted people to know, like, if you're also having a hard time, you're not crazy. Yeah. You're it not alone. It is totally normal to be having a hard time. I don't know, obviously, what the election is going to bring us. We're recording this literally the day before. The day before. And then the results will be in by the time this releases. So yes. we, like, have no idea. We have no input. But I just want you to know, like, you're not alone, no matter how you're feeling, how sad, happy, whatever. It's weird. And the world is scary. And that's why we have Stubbs. They're calling me again. They said they knew. <laughs> they fucking they knew. knew. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't wait for those to stop. I get like 18 fucking phone calls a day. I already voted. Okay, anyway. So back to Stubbs. Back, yeah, tell me about Stubbs. I just Stubbs. don't want people to feel alone because I've been feeling very alone. And then it feels good to, ha- you know, not feel alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Stubbs. Stubbs <laughs> <laughs> is from Talking... Takintna, Alaska. Okay. Talk, eat, na. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. I looked it up and like about 8,000 different people pronounce it 8,000 different ways. I support you. Um, so I know everyone's going to be mad at me no matter what. Alaska, <laughs> small town. Okay. We're there. So the population of this town is about 1,000. Um, oh, and for the record, the reason a lot of these towns do do this like mayoral thing is because they're like unincorporated territory Mm -hmm. basically so they don't have mayors it's like the county that they reside in is like what makes decisions so that's why they're allowed to have like uh cats as mayors (laughs) literally wish we could oh honestly the cat would probably make better decisions 100 percent. we just put a piece of paper in front of a cat and let them choose yeah yeah why not so in 1997 the manager of a general store in town so in the parking lot of the general store, her name is Lori, she sees that there are people in the parking lot with a box of kittens. Okay. And they're like, our cat had kittens. We just want them to get adopted out to good homes, like whatever. And she looks at all these cats and she sees that one doesn't have a tail. 
oh, Stubbs. And she's like, that's the one. He's that's the guy. fucking got a little nub in the back. Yeah, that's the guy for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Reminds me of uh, another tailless cat we knew. R.I.P. Willie. Willie. Willie was my brother's cat who went missing, who also didn't have a tail. And ate all my Taco Bell every single time I... He loved Taco he Bell. He loved Taco Bell. He would have loved this podcast. <laughs> oh, Willie. Um, <laughs> so she decided to name this cat Stubbs because <laughs> he didn't have a tail. He was just a little nubbin in the back. He was very cute. He was an orange cat. Oh, love an orange cat. So you know he was just stupid as fuck. Yeah, I love that. Not a single thought behind those <laughs> eyes. And he was a chubby guy. He looked really cute. He was very distinguished, but, you know, fat orange cat. Come on. Garfield? Literally the best genre. Uh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as the, the story goes... In 1998, there was an election. People in the small town were not happy with any of the human candidates. And they all wrote in Stubbs for mayor as an act of protest. And that is how Stubbs became the mayor of this small town in Alaska. Fuck yes. Other people have said that that is clearly not true because this is unincorporated territory. They don't have a mayor. Their county decides what they do. But I say fuck them. Yeah. I say Stubbs... <laughs> Stubbs was legally elected yes, mayor. Yes, and he won by a landslide, and you have to make him the mayor. Hello. Duh. The, them's the rules. <laughs> we don't make them. What are you going to do? <laughs> the general store was used as Stubbs' mayoral office during Perfect. his tenure. He did stay as mayor for the rest of his life, and he lived a long time. How long? So he lived to be over 20. <gasps> Stubbs! Yeah. Yeah. You're amazing. Yeah, pretty what good. What was your diet? <laughs> what what were you eating? What are your secrets? Stubbs was involved in a little controversy when everybody was pissed off about both uh, parties in Alaska, apparently, and uh, people were running for Senate. Stubbs was involved in a video that uh, criticized both Democratic and Republican candidates, being like, nobody's working for you. Stubbs said that? Stubbs. In a video? In his official <laughs> statement. Jesus. It was very controversial. Wow. Uh, Stubbs. Stubbs. Little minx. Stubbs said, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to take a stand. You know, is Stubbs a boy or a girl? I have no idea. <laughs> you didn't even know? I mean... At this point, if you're this badass, is gender even relevant? It's not. Yeah. I was just curious. <laughs> but yeah, so Stubbs uh, put out this political statement in 2014, and everybody was like, hell yeah, we hate everybody. <laughs> yeah. Stubbs. Stubbs. Stubbs for for the win. You fucking rock. Um, And then there was an assassination attempt on Stubbs. On Stubbs? Yeah. Oh, my God. Not Stubbs. They already took his tail. So what in, more can they take? <laughs> you can take my tail, but you can't take my liberty. Oh, my God. That's what Stubbs said, I'm assuming. <laughs> so in 2013, a rogue dog <gasps> assaulted Stubbs. No. And left Stubbs with a punctured lung, a broken sternum, and lacerations on their stomach and chest. What? And everyone calls this the Stubbs assassination attempt. Yeah, it was. 100%. And I don't know who released this dog. It could have been Democrats. It could have been Republicans. Like I said. We don't know. Stubbs was out here making political statements against both. As Stubbs should. As Stubbs should. And uh, But the good thing that came from it is. They, they lived. Stubbs lived. Okay. Yeah. And raised almost $5,000 for the surgery. The surgery was covered by a local animal hospital. Local, it was like 100 miles away because it's a small town. Oh, so they like shit. had to go really far. And so the $5,000 that they raised in an Indiegogo like fundraiser or whatever, which came, it was like 30 different countries people had uh, donated because oh, everybody wow. loves Stubbs so much. Yes. But all of that extra money was given to local shelters and rescues, which is obviously a huge influx of cash for really small towns and their humane societies. So Stubbs was able to, despite this assassination attempt, able to uh, raise some money and do some good for the community, as a mayor should. You know, who is our mayor of Long Beach, Robert Garcia? 
Girl, he hasn't been our mayor in so long. Who, who's our, our mayor? Our mayor is Rex Richardson. Oh, I only remember Robert <laughs> Garcia. That's the only he's name like I a, know. He's like a congressman now, I think. Oh, well, um, I think Long Beach, we need to come together and elect a cat or a dog. Elect a cat. I, I dig it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, t- Stubbs, I almost called her Tubbs or him Tubbs. I don't know. I'm actually like, <laughs> sorry, when you ask that, I'm like literally looking now to see. Stubbs is genderless. I like it. I think that's important. They have they have uh, evolved past the need for gender. No, that's Stubbs good. Has. No, that's progressive. It's good. Uh, Stubbs was always up to some kind of like antics. So of um, course, one time hitched a ride out of town <laughs> on a on a garbage truck. Stubbs just to see what's up. You just know what, what I mean? Would shake loose. Yeah, yeah, you never know. Anything can be fun, <laughs> and. Um, Luckily, they did live a very long life. They were born, raised, and died in the same town in Alaska, but lived over 20 years, which is quite long for a cat. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Especially a cat that is partially indoor, partially outdoor. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And like hitching rides on garbage trucks. Living life to the fullest. Like that's crazy. Usually outdoor cats get hit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Or like catch diseases. Yeah. They, just, they don't have as good of diets and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but don't worry. I I wasn't. There's a new mayor. Oh. Named Denali. Denali. Who is has now taken over the duties of Stubbs. Is Denali a cat? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they're sticking with the cats. Sticking with the cats. Okay, yeah. I respect it. Owned by the same people who own the general store as well. Okay. Because I feel like, here's the thing. If you have a dog, like a golden retriever as your mayor, you're like a laid back, you're fun loving, right? But if you have a cat as a mayor, I don't know. What does that say about you as a town? Like, I love cats. I have two cats. You're definitely up to no good. But you're up to no good. You're doing something. You might be doing something illegal in your town. That's Listen, all I'm saying. Money laundering? I don't know. I don't know. That just seems like a... It's none of my business. It just seems like something a cat would do. No, absolutely. Launder money. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, there were teenagers who tried to shoot <gasps> Stubbs with BB guns. Oh my God. One time, Stubbs fell into a deep fryer at a restaurant. Stubbs. And also, like I said, hitched a ride on a garbage truck. A deep, in a deep fryer? Uh-huh. Luckily, the deep fryer was off and oh. Stubbs was able to get out, but... Covered in a lot of oil. <laughs> and then, of course, the assassination attempt. Yeah, of course. I mean, can't forget that. You cannot forget that. But meanwhile, just like any good political candidate, <laughs> <laughs> fell in a deep fryer. <laughs> exactly. That's what you want from your political <laughs> exactly. candidate. Exactly. I'm going to start asking that first. Are they going to be a corn dog? I don't know. Have you fallen in? Have you fallen into a deep fryer? Did you survive? Then I'm not voting for you. I'm asking the important questions in this election. <laughs> um, I like Stubbs. Stubbs is good. Yeah, Stubbs was very cute. Very like classic orange cat Yeah, kind of look to Lo- Stubbs. Mischievous. Very mischievous. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> this espresso martini really got me. I, I, think. Too. I couldn't say controversial. <laughs> no, no. I tried so For hard. 20 minutes. Even when I said it, it sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we have Max, we have Clay Henry, and we have Stubbs. Yes. On the ballot. On the ballot. Next up to bat, we have, I'm probably going to say this name wrong, but this is how I'm saying it. Kaka Reco the Rhino. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dig it. So Kaka Reco, uh, she was a lazy but pleasant female rhino. It's just like me for real. Exactly. Well, I'm not that pleasant, but <laughs> well, lazy. Lazy. <laughs> lazy for sure. <laughs> she helped to open the Sao Paulo Zoo in Brazil. Her name, Kaka Reco, if I'm saying it wrong, I'm so sorry. I you apologize. were literally hanging out with our friend who's from Brazil last night. I didn't think about it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this is what we're saying. I'm sure it's wrong. Um, but her name literally translated in Portuguese is rubbish or garbage, which I can relate to because my cat's name is garbage. Yeah. And she is a perfect, beautiful princess. She is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Princess garbage. So Kaka Reco, Reco, Reco. She was used to open the zoo in Sao Paulo because 
uh, she was already like a pretty popular rhino in Rio. <laughs> Sorry, pretty popular rhino. Yeah, she was. I just love that. She was the talk of the town. I love that for her. She's beauty. She is grace. She's Miss United States. She's garbage. Exactly. <laughs> um, so they used her to draw attention to this new zoo that they were opening up. And because she was just a sweet little lazy gal that everyone loved... In 1959, during an election for the city council of Sao Paulo, a group of students had printed out over 200,000 ballots with Cacareco, the rhino's name on them. And this was in protest for voting for the other candidates. Ah, okay, yeah. So 540 people were running for only 45 seats on the city council. Jeez Louise, okay. And people thought, Better to elect a rhino than an ass. Oh, I love that. And that that is a quote. That is such a good quote. Which I might stand by in this election. (laughs) Yeah, Um, So the zoo director in Rio, so her original zoo director, Mm -hmm. gave his political opinion on Kakareko. Okay. And he said, and I quote, she's an ugly beast. (gasps) Very stupid. I hate the way men talk about women. Right. Disgusting. You could put her brain in a Brazil nut. We should put this guy in a Brazil I nut. Would, I should crack his brain like a Brazil we should nut. Brazil nut, yeah, something. I should crack his little tiny Brazil nuts that he clearly has. What an asshole. I know. And I'm like, that's the zoo that she was at. Like, that was her original zoo. Yeah. And that's how he's going to talk about her? That, that's how I know you did not treat your animals very no, nice. That's it, how that's you think about saying, them. That's what I'm saying, the disrespect. Yeah. So this statement actually made the people of Sao Paulo want to vote for her even more because they still believe they said, you know what, even if she is really fucking stupid, like, let's say she is, they still believe that she was smarter than everybody else running because facts real. Yeah. So she ended up getting over 100,000 votes and she won by a landslide. So many votes. (laughs) Guess how many votes the runner up got? 60,000? 10,079. Oh, she like actually she killed it. killed it. Like literally everyone voted for her. That's so crazy. That's crazy. Um, but even though Kakareko clearly won this election by so many, the election board disqualified her because she's a rhinoceros. For the simple crime of being a rhinoceros? I mean, that's discrimination. That doesn't seem fair like, at all. Literally discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. So although she never actually took a seat in council because these humans decided that her victory was some sort of like sinister nature, that's what they were saying, her candidacy inspired the Rhinoceros Party of Canada, which was led by a rhino named <laughs> Cornelius the First. Cornelius! <laughs> um, this party is something that I would like to actually register to be. Okay. Um, So they were a registered political party in Canada from 1960 to 1990. And this was basically to protest voting for pieces of shit people in office. Yeah. Their promise was very apt. Yeah, I know. Their promise was, quote, a promise to keep none of our promises. (laughs) Sounds like every politician I've ever heard of. And if you go to their website, partyrhino.ca, on the front page, it reads... As we're voting for clowns, choose the funniest. (laughs) Founded in 1963, the Rhinoceros Party offers an almost credible alternative to voters disillusioned by traditional parties. Yeah. Promising funnier lies of superior quality, our candidates are softer and more silky than any competitor's brand. Voting for real politicians does not get you anywhere. Change your strategy. Vote for a fake one. I, like, love that. And I love it. That's so funny. Yeah. I love that. And it's so true. So true. It is. Yeah. So even though she didn't end up sitting on the city council, she still, you know, she her message was loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that she received that many votes, like, the fact that... 100,000 to 10,000. Yeah. The That's fa- crazy. The fact that, like, people are were so fed up that they were willing to do that, like, that to me speaks volumes. It, yeah. Yeah. It does. And that should that should embarrass anybody who did sit on that council. I agree. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it did. Yeah. (laughs) A lot. Trust me. Good. 
I like her. I know. She's pretty cool. Yeah. She's just a lazy little gal. Just a lazy gal. She's just like me She for honestly real. probably didn't want to be on the council. She was probably like glad she wasn't. Yeah. She was like, oh, geez. Like, Louise. I didn't really want to do that. Yeah. You know? Ugh. I just wanted to lay around. It was not, I was not really looking to do a lot of work like that. Exactly. Yeah. So, in the it. long run, it was probably better for her. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> she deserves the best. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I can round this out with, uh, I'm also going to go international here. Ooh, let's go. With a story from Japan. Japan, all right. About Tama. Ooh, let me know. So Tama was born in Wakayama, Japan, and was raised with a group of stray cats that used to hang out at a particular train station. Is this also a cat? Yes. Okay. So this uh, station was called the Kishi Station, and people kind of came to love these cats. The guy who like ran the manager or like he was like the manager of the station. Um, he would like feed the cats and he like really liked them. And they were kind of they were like their own little landmark. Right. Like, you knew if you went to the Kishi station, you'd see all these cats. Okay, and they're really cute. I love that. But unfortunately, in 2004, the rail company that was running this train station was having financial issues and they were actually thinking about closing the station because they didn't think it was worth having open because there weren't enough people going there. And in April of 2006, the electric railway company that owned this station actually de-staffed all of their stations on this line. And they were like, we're going to like totally automate everything. We're going to cut all of our human staff and we're just going to make everything automated um and during this time they're like well now we need to like get these stray cats out of here because they're just causing issues there's no one there to feed them they're just going to be a huge liability to us um and they also wanted to build new roads and new things like around the station and they're like these cats just can't be here but that manager who i mentioned earlier his name was koyoma he pleaded with the com- the company and was like please like let these cats just live in the station like people here like really love them like people love these cats so, yeah like, you can't evict the cats they i don't know how many times i can tell you guys cats and animals in general make people happy yes they do why do you want to take that away yeah and so after pleading of locals and this impromptu manager guy on january 5th 2007 railway officials officially awarded one of the cats named tama the title of station master oh and as station master her main job was to greet and entertain people either coming off of the train or waiting for the train entertain and tama was beautiful by the way I would love to see a picture. She is Calico. <gasps> love. It. Did you know? I mean, I'm sure you do, but that it's like 90% of Calico cats are female, are female. and yeah. 90% of orange cats are boys. Are male. Yeah, that's it's, crazy. It's a genetic thing. Yeah. So this is this is Tama. <gasps> Stunning. The prettiest cat you've ever seen. And huh? she has a little train conductor uh-huh. hat on. Are you joking me? Uh-huh. Look at her. Oh, she's beautiful. Once again, this will be on the YouTube and oh, on Instagram. Oh, all of these photos of every animal is going to be up. Don't worry. She's stunning. Yeah. She serves. Yeah. <laughs> that face card does not decline. No, never. So when she got appointed this position, she became like property basically of the railway company. And instead of paying her they gave her a year's worth of cat food and they also got her a little name tag that had her name on it and also her pos- position as station master i love it yeah i wish she would um what's it called drive the the trains oh <laughs> like she <laughs> with her little paws yeah <laughs> honk honk <laughs> Uh, they also specially designed a hat for her, a station master's hat, yeah, which is the hat real cute. you see in the photos. Ugh. And it took them six months to do it because they were like per- actually trying to get it so it would stay on her head. And she's a cat, obviously. So they ended up spending all this money to design the hat. And then they realized during the summer, her original hat was going to be too hot on her little head. So they also made her a summer hat. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm moving. I am moving. I am 100% moving to a place that will allow these kinds of things to happen. Yeah, right? Because this is ridiculous. 
Somebody did get jealous of Tama and steal her little <gasps> name tag off of her collar. And they, like, tried to sell it. But they were like, well, fuck you. And they just made her a new name tag. Like, don't don't touch the fucking... Don't touch the talent. The station master. Yeah. Like, what are you She's doing? She's in charge. So this is actually a term in Japan called nikonomics, which means catonomics. And it is the economics that surround having animals, especially cats, um, involved in like tourism and stuff Love like that. It. Because Tama's appointment increased visitors to the train station by 20%. Wow. And they believe that Tama has contributed over 1.1 billion yen ah. to the local economy, boosting this train station because people purposefully take this train to, to see her. See her. Yes. I would. Yeah. So in 2008, Tama was so well regarded in like all of Japan that she was promoted and she became the super station ma- uh, super station master. The super yes. station master. Wow. And the funny thing is, and this is kind of sad, but it's also really funny. This promotion made her the only female in a managerial position in the company. Well. It's depressing. But can't say I'm surprised. Also a little funny. <laughs> but you know what? Good for you, Tama. Yeah, right? We love you. We She's support you. shattering glass ceilings That's all over the place. As you deserve to do, baby girl. <laughs> Tama was so popular that in 2009, they actually introduced an entire train themed after Tama, which was customized with cartoon depictions of, depictions of her all over the train and like decals and like the whole train looked like her, like had oh little cartoons God. of her all over it. Yeah. Like once again, like she was... She was making money, money for this company. Yeah. Yeah. And then in 2011, they promoted her again to the post of managing executive officer, which actually technically made her third in line at the railway company behind the CEO and owner and the CFO. She was literally the third most important person at this company. I mean, uh, (laughs) listen, she's a boss. She is. She's a girl boss. She is a girl boss. And don't worry, she brought other girl bosses up with her. Good. Because she, because she had assistants with her. Um, her sister, Chibi, and her mother, Miko, were both assistants at the station. Perfect. 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 <laughs> they ended up even rebuilding the building of the station to make it look like a cat's face. Do you have a photo? Yes. Please. <laughs> I need to see this. I'm not kidding you. This cat is like a legend. I love her. I'd probably die for her. Oh, so here's the train. Oh, my God. Wouldn't you love to ride on that? I want to be on that train right now. (laughs) And then here is the new building that they made that they made to look like a cat. Oh, my God. (laughs) Isn't that cute? That's so cute. Yeah, because it's like still like structurally sound. It's not like cartoonish. No, I. It's way different than I expected. Yeah, yeah. I know it's adorable. Wow, I love they it. They gave little eyes and little ears to the house. It's so cute. Incredible. So, in her sixth year as station master, on January fifth, two thousand and thirteen. Tama was actually awarded and elevated to the honorary president. Of the electrical rail company. Oh, for my. life. For life. She was in charge, girl. Tama. <laughs> Hell yeah. I love to see a woman in charge. I know, right? Girl boss, gatekeep. Let's go. That's right. So, unfortunately, on no, June no. 22nd, 2015, at the age of 16, which is a pretty good life, Tama did die. Thousands of fans from all over Japan came to pay their respects to the honorary eternal station master. They gave her like an official um, like sacred funeral and she ended up being entombed at a new at a nearby uh, station like she was a literal goddess. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So you can go see her tomb today? Yes. Yes. (sighs) And so after the 50-day mourning period, Tama was succeeded by her deputy, 
Nitama, which means the second Tama. And Nitama's first official duty was to go and visit the shrine of her predecessor, Tama, to pay her respects. I love these cats. It's so cute. It's so cute. I just think it's so funny when I read these stories, especially about like stray cats and whatever, because I just I know so many animals that are like nightmares. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I'm like, how are these cats just like chilling? No, I know. They're like, sure, put a hat on me, whatever. I don't care. Well, it's kind of like my I rescued my one cat Tesla from a rescue that they've had. They had him since he was like an itty bitty baby. Yeah. And he's a monster cat. Yeah. I love him, but he's a nightmare. And then I just pick up my cat garbage off the street and she's a perfect little princess. Literally out of a garbage can. Yeah. And she's literally just like the sweetest little baby angel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think she could be mayor. I would vote for her. Well, I'm thinking, I think my dog Baloo would be a really good mayor. He would be a good mayor. He's, he's like neutral. He likes everybody. He like, yeah, he does like everybody. So does Garbage though. Garbage does. She is like one of the only cats I've ever met that is like, yeah, whoever wants to just. Well, no, Tesla likes everybody. My my nightmare cat. Yeah. He likes everybody. But he also likes to knock things down a lot. Yes, he does. (laughs) But he would, if he was in office, he would cause a ruckus. Oh, he would chaos for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Buildings would be burning. (laughs) If you know what I mean. (laughs) Not be a fun time. Okay. He is evil. He is. Yes. Um, But yeah, so that is the story of Tama and her train station and her little hat. Her hat is so freaking cute. You guys are going to want to see the hat. You're going to want to see the hat. Definitely Google the hat. So Google the hat. (laughs) Go on our Instagram. Go on our YouTube. You're going to want to see it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, now the, the real question comes to mind. Who would we vote for if all of these animals were on the ballot? This is hard. Well, because I know you have some bias because you love golden retrievers. I do love golden retrievers. The drunk goat is obviously the funniest one. The drunk goat is is pretty good. Clearly the funniest, but the most mayor material? I don't know. Okay. Are we doing mayor or are we doing president? Oh, president. Like if if we are voting... Voting president. For president today. Okay. Yeah, because like a drunk goat is like a good president or a good mayor, but not a good yeah, president. Yeah, I don't think the drunk goat could be president. Same with a golden retriever. You don't think he could be president? I love a golden retriever. No thoughts behind those eyes. No, you're right. You're I think right. I would have to vote for a cat. I, my initial thought is Tama. Yeah. Just because the hat. The hat. <laughs> the hat is very compelling. The hat is re- but Stubbs is a close second. Yeah, Stubbs. I do think a cat would have to be the president. I do feel like Stubbs is Stubbs is definitely um, more politically active. Yeah, you know you're right. And Stubbs lived a very long time. He lived a long time. Yeah, twenty years. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm voting Stubbs. I think we'll have to go Stubbs. Okay, Stubbs for president. Stubbs for president. Twenty twenty five. He lived through adversity. No tail. No tail. He had adventures getting on garbage trucks. So true. He was abused, shot by BB guns. Yes. Oh, my gosh. He survived an assassination attempt oh my, yeah. by a dog. Absolutely. That's There's just no like other option. It's we got to go stuff. We got to go stuff. Go <laughs> the only but orange, all of the, the candidates o- were good. All of the candidates were good. This is the only orange person I'd ever vote for for president. <laughs> <laughs> with the record show. <laughs> real but yeah real stubs for sure love it love okay, it stamp of approval stubs for president stubs for president you heard it here first you heard it here kids kiddos <laughs> let us know who you would vote for please yes if it's that drunk goat if it's that drunk goat you have to ask yourself you have to look inward i love you but i'm worried about you and really ask yourself yeah. why <laughs> okay like i love clay henry but like really think about it listen we love a we love a chaotic mess <laughs> But is that really who you want? Yeah, is that really who you want running the country? I don't know. (laughs) Um, Well, how about we close this out with a listener story? Yes. All right. So let's round this out with a listener story from Alondra. Hello, Alondra. So Alondra says, hi, ladies. I just finished listening to episode 195, and the listener story left me deeply anxious and nauseous. Oh. It brought up some memories from when my family lived in a house, and I'm convinced it had some malevolent energy. Uh Uh-oh. 
A lot of things happened in our time there, but there were a few that stand out that I'd like to share in the hopes that this maybe gets a weight off my chest. Sorry for the length of this email. Feel free to read it on your own time if it's too long for an episode. Oh, no, baby. You're here. You're here. For some background, I grew up deeply religious and my family still is. So I've always believed in the supernatural. I'm not active in the church anymore, but I do still have my own faith and beliefs. Anyway, when I was younger, my family lived in an old house for the entirety of my elementary school time, K K through sixth grade. I remember that even at that age, I always felt like something was wrong, but I think the main, quote, darkness was concentrated on what would later become my older sister's room. When we first moved in, I shared a room with my bo- with both my younger and older sister, but when she started high school, she asked that the computer room be turned into a room for her. It was really a small room, just right next to our shared room, and I think it was meant to be more of an office space. But we kept it as a storage room with the family computer in there. My parents agreed, since she was getting older, that she wanted her own room and privacy. It was barely big enough for her twin bed and a desk, but it did have a small closet, so she had space for all of her things. When she moved into that room, that's when things started to change, or maybe just when I became more aware of them. My older sister used to love playing with us and hanging out, but when she moved into her own room, she started to pull away. She only ever spent time in her room with the door closed, and she'd lose it when we would try to go inside just to be with her. My bed was against the wall that we shared between our two rooms, and at night, I would occasionally hear voices coming from her room, and I assumed it was her on the phone with a secret boyfriend or something. I thought maybe she had pulled away so much because she knew... I'd rat her out if I found any proof. Yes, I was an asshole. (laughs) It bothered me, but I was usually able to fall asleep anyway until one night I heard her crying. Like crying really hard. I laid there in bed wondering why my parents hadn't gotten up to check on her. Their room was just across the hall from ours, so I would definitely hear it if they got up. After what felt like forever, I got out of bed and decided to check on her myself. I tried to be very quiet, but my door creaked when I opened it, which must have woken up my parents. I crept to her room, and the crying only got louder, so I was convinced that it was her crying like I thought. I walked into her room, and she was laying on her side, facing the wall, crying. I went up to her to gently touch her shoulder and ask what was wrong, but she didn't even turn over. As I mentioned, my parents heard me open my door a few seconds earlier, so my mom came into my room and turned on the light to see what was going on. The crying instantly stopped. I turned back to my sister and realized she was turning around to face me. Waking up to the light, she was looking very confused. Her face was completely dry. She had been asleep and not crying at all. Oh, no. I instantly felt really cold and really scared. I told my mom that I had heard my sister crying and my mom said that she hadn't heard anything and that my sister said that she had been she had just been sleeping. It really freaked me out, but my mom just led me back to my room and went back went back to bed herself. I didn't sleep that night for fear that I would hear it again. In the morning, my mom set out my breakfast and I asked why she why she didn't hear the crying. She said she really hadn't. And then suggested that maybe I just heard a cat crying outside of my window and had mistaken it for my sister. Have you ever heard a cat cry? Yeah, literally. (laughs) It's very different. Once you know what the sound is like, you can tell. We had cats. I know what a cat sounds like when it cries. And I know what my sister sounds like when she cries. That was no cat. It was definitely coming from her room. After that, I feel like whatever was in our house got bolder. And I started to hear things more often. I'd hear shuffling in the hallway. Oh, that's so scary. The uh, the closet door by my younger sister's bed would thump. Ugh. And the voices from my, my older sister's room continued. Once I was awake listening to the big clock we had in the living room just tick, tick, ticking, and it felt way too loud. Then I heard what sounded like someone making a ticking sound along with the clock. No. I was starting to sweat in fear when they just yelled, stop! And all of the sound stopped. Even the clock that I always heard ticking every night. Disgusting. I know my parents were aware of the evil there as well. Even if they never mentioned what they experienced to us, 
I do recall when things must have gotten really bad for them and they had us all sleep in the living room for a few nights and we all stayed up and prayed for a long time before they let us go to sleep on the pullout couch. To this day, I don't know what they felt or saw that made them react this way. I don't I don't even bring it up to them because I'm afraid of what they'll say. But my siblings remember and we all talk about the quote old Anaheim house sometime. Anaheim? Yeah, I don't know if this is local. Oh. My older sister confessed to me a few years back that she had been in a deep depression during those days, even developing an ED. But when we finally moved, it felt like it felt like everything just went away. She and I believe that the house affected her in that way. I'm sorry for how long this is. I just feel like I had to share it. Anytime I hear something too similar to my experience, those memories come back and I can't move on with my day until I express it. Despite Despite all that, I still really enjoy the pod and other ones like it. Makes me feel less alone. Thanks for all you do and keep it up. That was a good one. That was yeah, scary. Yeah, it definitely seemed like the house was affecting Absolutely. Sister, yeah. Yeah, totally. And like, I mean, we hear stories like that all the time that people send us or that we read or whatever mm-hmm. where like um, depression, eating disorders, you know, yeah. suicidal thoughts, stuff like that will like pop up. And then they'll like move and it's like, oh, everything's fine. Yeah. And you're like, okay, there's clearly some sort of energy energy or something going on there. And like, I mean, obviously mental health is its own unique beast. And I'm not trying to be like, it's demons. Yeah. But like there are definitely certain scenarios where I'm like, oh, that's weird. And that place had bad energy and made you feel bad. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like most people have experienced that. Like they'll walk into a house or a bar or a hotel or whatever. And be like, ew, I feel bad mm-hmm. here. So imagine if that's like your home. Yeah. And you just feel like that all the time. All the time. That'd yeah. be terrible. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that with us. If you have a story you would like to share, you can do that at dtkpod.com slash contact. I also wanted to remind anyone that was thinking about signing up for our Patreon, do not do it through the iOS app. <laughs> I will continue to say this. and I will link our Patreon directly in our episodes from now on. So you can find it down there. Do not use the app. Apple will charge you fees. That money does not go to us or to Patreon. It's literally just an Apple charge Mm -hmm. on their own. But if you sign up in a in a desktop computer or through like your actual browser, when it says like go to the app, don't go to the app. If you're just signing up, sign up through your browser. Um, If you have an Android phone, don't even worry about it. This is only iOS and Obviously, we just totally appreciate you if you do join the Patreon. We have tons of fun stuff going on on there all of the time. But I just wanted to let you know because you will get charged more and it doesn't benefit anybody except for Apple. Yes. So like, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> We're trying to save you money because it is like, I mean, not, I don't want to say it's substantial, but like any amount of money is substantial. Yeah. Especially nowadays. Yeah, so, of course. Um, yeah. So just make sure. Remember that. We'll be reminding you periodically about that. Um, I also posted about it on our Twitter and Instagram and stuff. So just keep that in mind. But thank you. <laughs> Let us know what beautiful little animal you would vote for for president. Yes, please. Or if you have one that you know about and we didn't discuss. Let us know. Let us know. And we hope that you feel safe and loved and heard today. And if you don't, remember that we hear you, we see you, and we love you. Yes, we do. But most importantly, (laughs) make sure you keep that front door locked. Make sure you keep your mind open. And And keep keep drinking drinking the Kool-Aid. Controversy. Controversy? (laughs) What am I? Maybe I am drunk. Controversy? Why can I not... How do you say that word? Controversy? Am I not saying it right? Because I don't think I'm saying it right. (laughs) I'm going to pee my (laughs) bed. How do you say that word? Controversy. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Why are we we putting an H in there? I don't know. I don't know. Oh god. Controversy. <laughs> okay, oh my god, I'm so sweaty. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. This is going to be a fun edit. Okay. Um <laughs> So Stubbs was involved in a controversy. God damn it. <laughs>
<laughs> now I'm in my head about it. You know what I mean? Oh my god! Oh my god! Ooh. 